In this video, we're going to learn how to use the Git version control system to manage our code base for our own projects. Before we get started with anything else, we're going to install the IceWeasel web browser. IceWeasel is based on Firefox, it's just a Debian port of the Firefox code base, so it should be very familiar to most users. We're going to use IceWeasel because the default web browser that comes with the Raspberry Pi is very simple and sometimes it doesn't display all the web elements correctly. And we'll actually need that to learn how to use uh, GitHub and Bitbucket here in just a little bit. So to install it, we'll bring up a command line and we'll run our usual sudo apt git update. And once that is completed successfully, we'll go ahead and install IceWeasel with sudo apt git install IceWeasel. IceWeasel is now installed and we can run it by going up to the start menu, going to internet, and notice there are two new entries, Firefox ESR and IceWeasel Firefox ESR. It puts two icons there, but you can click on either one. They do the same thing and they both launch the same browser. So now you can see that we have a full version of the Firefox web browser running and we're ready to start browsing the web. Now we're going to take a closer look at using the Git version control system for managing our own software projects. Version control is what allows us to back up our code to a safe repository somewhere, while also keeping track of all the historical changes that happen to a code base as it evolves over time. It allows us to work together and collaborate more effectively, and also roll back our code if there's any changes that we need to revert. We're going to talk about two very popular web services that implement the Git protocol. The first is GitHub, where the course source repository is located, and the second is Bitbucket. GitHub and Bit Bitbucket basically provide the same service, but they have different pricing plans and different uh, features that they include for their free accounts. On GitHub, a free account allows you to only have public source repositories. So any repository that you create or clone from somewhere else, any changes you make there will be visible to the whole world. That can be a problem if you want to maintain your own private repository for, say, working on your own assignments. Bitbucket, on the other hand, provides a very similar service, but it allows you to have private repositories with a free account. Uh, their pricing model is a little bit different. It's based on the number of collaborators you have, but since a private account generally won't have any collaborators other, other than yourself, this is probably a better service for managing your own source repositories on if you're not collaborating on anything and you want everything to remain private. So suppose that we want to make our own version of the class source repository on our own Bitbucket account so that we can make changes and have those changes uh, privately held in a private repository. We would need to clone the repository from its origin, which is on GitHub, into its new location, which is going to be in Bitbucket under some new account. So assuming you've registered for an account on Bitbucket, we're going to clone our existing course GitHub account into our new Bitbucket account. So when you go to a GitHub repository, you'll be greeted here with all of the source files and all the contents for that repository. You need to pay attention to the URL up here because this is the location that we're going to clone. Now, if we had a GitHub account and we were logged into that account, we could directly clone this repository into our account. And if we had a paid account, we could select to make that private. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this URL, and then we're gonna go over here to Bitbucket. And on this window, I've already logged into my account, and I'm gonna clone the repository from GitHub into Bitbucket. So what you need to do to clone a repository is click on the Repositories button, Import Repository, and then on Source, you'll leave Git selected, and then you're gonna put the URL of your repository, which we already copied. So this is the URL to our repository, and then we can name this something new. This is the name that it's going to appear as under the Bitbucket account, and I'm just going to leave it CSC 2100. Now this is important, you click this button to make it private or not. If you leave this unchecked, then anybody will be able to see the source code and the revision history and any changes that you've made. If you leave it uh, selected as private, then it's only private and you can only view it by logging into your account. So once that's all set, I'm going to hit Import Repository, and this will begin the importing process. Once everything is imported successfully, it'll automatically take me to the repository 
uh, under my account. So here I am in the repository and I can click over here on the source button and this should show me all the contents from the original repository as they were on the GitHub ac account from where we cloned everything. So here I can see I have all the files and folders that I had in the original account. So at this point, I have my own private copy of the CSC 2100 account, which I now have hosted under Bitbucket. So I can clone this repository using the Git protocol via the command line, just like I did earlier with the uh, GitHub account. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring up a command line and I'm gonna clone my new version of the repository. And now it's cloned that repository. So I can hit LS and that shows that I have a new CSC 2100 folder and that should have all the contents of the repository. So by navigating in that repository and hitting LS again, I can see that I do in fact have the files and folders um, from that Bitbucket repository. Now suppose that I wanna change this repository by adding my own new files and modifying some of the existing files. And I wanna back up all those changes to the Bitbucket, Bitbucket account that we just created. The Git protocol allows us to do that using something called commits. A commit is basically where you commit some list of changes to the code base either through adding new files or editing old files or whatever, and you check in that commit to your Bitbucket account or to your GitHub account or wherever you have it hosted using the Git um, protocol. So what I'm gonna do is edit this uh, repository by making some changes. First, I'm going to create a new file uh, called test.txt, and I'm gonna use the Linux touch command to do that. So if I enter the touch command, that will create a new blank file with whatever name that I give it. In this case, it's going to be test.txt. So if I hit ls, I can see that it's made the file test.txt. Now I wanna edit this text file. I can edit this text file by going to the graphical menu up here and bringing up a text editor, or I could edit it from the console using a, a console text editor, like nano or vi or emacs or whatever. I prefer nano, so I'm going to issue the nano command, and this will launch a very simple text editor that I can uh, make changes with. So we're in here in the file test.txt, and you can see that there's a no text there's no text here. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter some. And then I hit control O for the write out command down here at the bottom. Write out just means save. And then I hit enter to commit the changes. Now my new file is saved or the changes have been saved, I can hit control X to exit. And then test.txt should have been edited. Now to make sure that it's edited, I can issue the cat command and that'll print the contents of test.txt to the console. And you can see that it has my text. So now that I've edited a new text file, I also wanna edit an existing text file in the repository and check in both sets of changes to our Bitbucket account via the commit system. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit hello world.cpp, which is in the hello world folder. And I'm going to use nano again. And I'm just going to go over here and arbitrarily change the print string. And then I'll save and exit uh, from the editor just as I did before. So at this point, I've made a new text file and I've also made changes to an existing text file in the repository. I'm going to go ahead and compile the uh, modified version of Hello World just like before by invoking CMake. So I'll issue CMake dot, and then that will go look for the CMake list.txt file that I've included with the source code. So now my file, uh, my make files have been generated and I'm ready to build using the make command. Now at this point, we have the new text file that we created, the modified version of hello world, and then we also have a bunch of build files that were just generated by our CMake and make commands. So if I hit LS, I'll see here that there's a, this make file, cmake install.cmake, cmake cache.txt, and then there's a folder in there with some other stuff. So what we wanna do is commit our changes into the Bitbucket account, but we only wanna commit certain files. Namely, we wanna commit the new file that we created, test.txt, the modified version of hello world.cpp, and we wanna exclude all of the other new files because those are build files. Generally, we don't include build files into a source repository because it's specific to whatever platform that code was compiled on. 
For example, if I'm working with a Mac developer and a Windows developer, and I'm running Debian Linux on my Raspberry Pi, the build files that we generate will be very different and they won't work for the other systems. So there's not really a benefit of including them. Plus, depending on the compiler, build files can actually get quite large during the compilation process. So they can just really clutter your, uh, your Bitbucket or your GitHub repository up. And so we just don't include them. So what I want to do now is commit the modified hello world.cpp and the new test.txt, but ignore all the other new files that I've created. By default, Git will automatically include modified files that it's already tracking when you try to make a new commit, but it'll ignore any other new file until you explicitly tell it to add it to the tracking. So the first thing I want to do is go back uh, up one directory, and I want to go ahead and add the test.txt to uh, tracking so that it'll actually commit it into the repository. So to do that, I'll type git add and then test.txt. Once that command has been entered, test.txt has been added to my repository tracking. And I can use the git status command to see what sort of changes have been made uh, when I issue the next commit. So we can see here that we have a new file, test.txt. That's because I just used the git add command. And then I have a modified file, hello world.cpp. That's because by default, it will, it will commit any new changes to files that it's already tracking. Notice here, I also have these untracked files. These are all of those uh, build files that were generated when I ran cmake and make in the hello world directory. So git recognizes that those files are in here, but it's not tracking them, and therefore it's not going to try to add those to the commit when I actually push it in the repository. Since the status text looks exactly like what I want to happen, in other words, I want to check in a new test.txt, and I want to check in the modified version of hello world.cpp, I'm ready to issue the git commit command. Now when we issue git commit, we're also going to include a flag here that's going to do um, a couple of things. The A part of this dash AM flag says I want to check in all of the changes here that are in this status message. So I could individually check in just test.txt test or the modified hello world.cvp or whatever, but the A flag tells us that I want to do all the stuff that's reported by the commit command. The M part of this flag says that I want to go ahead and specify a commit message with this commit. A commit message is just a very concise description of why you're doing this commit so that anybody who looks through the repository can look at the reversion history and they can see what you were thinking when you actually did this commit. So in practice, what happens is if you add a new feature or you fix a bug on an existing code base, you would do a commit and then you would enter some text that just says something like, I fixed bug number 127 or whatever. So we're just gonna put in here, checked in new file for testing. and then we're going to issue the command. Now, if you run this, you're going to get an error message if you've never set up your um, identity in Git. You only have to enter an identity once, and it doesn't have to match the credentials that you're going to give that Bitbucket is going to expect when you actually make the commit. So you just follow the instructions here and issue this uh, git config command. And we're going to issue this command for the, uh, uh, the account email address and the account name. And again, it doesn't have to match what's actually registered with Bitbucket. So once this is done, I should be able to issue the uh, git commit command again. And you can see here that the commit has been performed successfully. So here two files are changed, two insertions were made, and one deletion. And we're basically ready to push this up. Now, when I say push this up, when we issued the commit command, that only commits these changes to our local repository. So the way that git works it keeps a local full source repository on your system, which is really just a database of all the historical changes. And then it doesn't actually check those in until you push those changes up into the repository on GitHub or Bitbucket or whatever remote repository you wanna push it to. So what we need to do is a push command and a push command is just reconciling the changes from your local copy here that we've committed up into the remote copy. So if I hit git push origin master, what this command is doing, it's issuing the git push command, and then it's saying push these changes up into the origin, wherever they came from. In this case, the origin is 
uh, the Bitbucket account where we did the original clone. And then the master command is telling it what branch to go to. Branching is a feature of Git that allows us to maintain multiple versions of the same source code base without necessarily putting changes into the main production base until you're absolutely ready to do that. So let's say, for example, we have a big open source project and we have a very stable version of the code that we keep in the master branch. And then let's say that we're going to add some experimental new feature. Rather than adding those experimental new features into the master branch as we code them, we can make a new branch of the original repository, make our changes there, and then test them. And then when we're very sure that everything's not going to break and we want to actually commit everything into the master branch, we can merge the two branches together, and then that would update the original code base. And we're not going to do that right now. We're just going to use the master branch. So we'll go ahead and continue. So now it's going to ask you for your username and password. And now that we've executed the git push, we've now updated our remote repository on the actual Bitbucket account with the changes that we made here locally. So everything should be reconciled together. Now suppose that I had checked out a version of this repository on another machine before I actually made this commit change here, that other machine would be out of date. So the first thing that you do when you start working um, in a repository that you've already cloned is you want to reconcile your, your local copy before you actually try to make any changes so that you don't get conflicts. Because it's possible that somebody else has made a change uh, and pushed that change up there and you have an older version of the source code. So to do that uh, reconciliation, you just issue the git pull command and that will go to the GitHub account or Bitbucket or whatever and that will update your code base. So we can see here we're already up to date. So that means at this point, there are no new changes in the remote repository that I need to do on the local repository. But if there were new changes, it would list them here. It would automatically download and get my local code base up to, up to date with the remote version or the origin. So now that we've done the, the git push, we can go back to Bitbucket and we can look at our code base and refresh this. And we should see our changes that we made earlier. So here's test.txt that we added as part of our commit. And if we go into hello world, we should see the modified version of hello world.cpp. And here's the changes. We can also click on history to see the revision history for this particular file. So here we can say a user called your name because that's what we set up in the um, console on this Raspberry Pi made a commit, and then this is a hashtag for the commit. It's just a unique identifier that describes, uh, that identifies the commit. And then we have the commit message that we issued. So checked in new file for testing, and it has the date in which we actually did that commit. So when you click on history, you can see the history for the entire repository. And after some amount of time and lots of collaboration, you'll have hundreds and maybe even thousands of entries here that basically detail the historical evolution of the code base. We also can revert changes made from any commit in case something was pushed up erroneously or if we made a mistake or we introduced a new bug or whatever. We can go in here and see when that commit was make, made, when the mistake was made, and we can revert and we can remove those changes from the code base. So basically Git is a protocol that allows us to do everything that we need to do to collaboratively write code and not worry about um, source code integrity. Like if we were to say lose a hard drive or uh, you know, something happened to our actual storage medium. And we can also maintain this historical information so that we can track bugs and uh, revert changes if necessary.